Father God, thank you for yet another day. Thank you for yet another opportunity uh, to, to come together, to, uh, to be amongst uh, family. Thank you that you have made us family. Thank you that you have, uh, that you have called us all into being members of the body of your church. God, I ask, uh, I ask that you would, that you, be, you, would, you would be with us tonight, that you would join us, God, and, and that your Holy Spirit would guide us. Uh, so these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. So uh, last week, we started a new series, and this new series we're calling Witnesses. And uh, it, it kind of picks up from, from where we left off in the last series. And in the book of Acts, we get to see the, the disciples, the apostles, the early church in action. And, and, and what Jesus said to them in, in Acts chapter one, uh, verse, verse eight, uh, and he knew it was gonna be verse eight, even though it hadn't even been written down yet. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power to be my witnesses. And he said, here in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, like he was going here, then further out, further out, and, and to the ends of the earth, or were, um, as, as we like to say. And so we're, we're, we're taking a stroll through through acts and i've i was trying this week i was trying this week not to uh, not to make this series too long and trying to pick some stuff and i was going to skip the chapter that we're going to be in tonight uh but uh you know i i got some help uh i reached out to some folk and said hey what y'all think about this some stuff that i usually try to figure out myself and so I asked, I asked for some help. And, and because of the feedback that they gave me, uh, I decided that, that we should not skip chapter five because I was just going to skip chapter five. And we're not going to skip chapter five. In fact, we might be in chapter five for, for two weeks because I'm not going to get through all of this tonight. Not after, not after uh, all this time that I then took. Nonetheless, we're going to, we're going to uh, Acts chapter five, if you would turn there in your Bibles. And I want to read just, uh, I'm gonna read just a couple verses, uh, but then we're just going to walk through the text. And that's why we're not going to get through tonight, because, um, because once I realized that the Holy Spirit was using uh, these two individuals to guide me to, to chapter five, I stayed up all night, I got pages of notes pages and we're not gonna get i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna bother to try to get through all of this stuff but i can't skip over any of it so we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it we're gonna go with it so uh and I, I am gonna read out of the niv even though it's not yet highlighted those that's an old highlight uh we're gonna be in acts chapter five and it, the verses that i want to that i want to read for us uh real quick just to get us started there's there, there's three three little three little sections. We're gonna read these real quick, and then we're gonna we're just gonna walk through this text. So let's let's jump down to uh, we're gonna we're gonna start at the end. Let's go to verse thirty eight. Acts chapter five verse thirty eight says therefore, and we'll we'll get to what the therefore is therefore therefore. In the present case, I advise you. You know, the, this is somebody telling the, the church leaders what to do with the apostles. <laughs> Leave these men alone. Let them go. And, and this is the part right here. This is, in fact, I'm going to highlight it right now because it's just good. It, it, it says, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. And 
that I just got to chill just reading that. And I've read it like 18 times, but that's, we'll get there. We might not even get there tonight. That's what's so, so much fun about this. And then verse 42, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching. They, ne they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. I'm going to highlight that one too. If you're a highlighting person or an underlining person, I encourage you, I encourage you to, to underline, highlight some of this stuff because uh, especially if you are not a note taker because you'll be flipping through your Bible and you'll see that highlight or that underline and then you'll remember everything the Holy Spirit said to you. You might forget anything, anything that I have to say, but you'll remember everything the Holy Spirit had to say to you. And, and then this is the verse right here. And, and this is gonna be, this is the theme verse for this whole series, whether it's five weeks or takes us all away until, uh, in, in, until folks go back to their college classes because I think school's about to get out or something. It, verse 32, Acts chapter five, verse 32 says, we are witnesses of these things. And so was the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. We are witnesses. Now, if, you, if you're using a highlighter like I am, I want you to go back and I want you to get a pen, whatever color, whatever color you want. I'm going to use a green pen because, because it's, it's in that church Bible study. And why would I use any other color? Uh, and underline, we are witnesses. We are witnesses. Witnesses. We're going to start at, at verse, we're going to start at verse 12 in, in our walk through this text. I'm skipping what I'm skipping uh, on purpose. And we're going to skip a lot of stuff in the series because there's there's just not, there's just not time. So let's start at, at verse 12. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and, and all the believers used, used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade or Solomon's portico. Now, if you remember last week, because some of this stuff is going to sound real familiar from, from last week, because they, they kept doing what they were doing uh, after Peter and John were, were scolded and told, hey, don't y'all don't y'all be teaching this about this Jesus. Don't y'all be healing people in Jesus' name. Uh, they kept doing it anyway. So <laughs> they're still here still coming to the temple, still hanging out at Solomon's colonnade, uh, which is just like this long wall with pillars. They just kind of took over some space at the, at the temple, uh, in, in the courtyard of the temple. And one of the things that happened just before this is uh, there's a story of these two people, husband and wife, named Ananias and Sapphira, and, and they were giving, uh, and, they, and they lied. Is what it's about. They, they they lied. They said that they were giving an amount that they weren't giving, uh, and and they didn't have to lie. They could have just told the truth and said, "Hey, you know, we we sold something, and we are giving we're just, we're giving a percentage of of the proceeds." But they said that it was all of it, and they lied, and they died, like right in, in front of Peter, and they conspired to lie, and and people knew about this, and so it was it was scary hours which explains this next verse, verse 13, no one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. First of all, if we are, if we are doing what we are supposed to be doing as children of God, as, as believers and followers of Jesus, and, and, and people who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we are walking in obedience, we will we will be admired. We will be admired. 
but nobody wanted to join in with them. And, and we see this sometimes, people who are like, hey, you be going to church, you be doing your thing, you know, miss Bible study, you do all of that. And it's like, hey, more power to you. Ain't my thing, but I got to respect it. And that's basically what was going on because the people who, who might've kind of half-stepped it, people who might've half-stepped and, and, and not been able to follow through, they saw what had happened or they heard what had happened to Ananias and Sapphira. And it was like, uh, yeah, the, the stakes are too high. It seems like a high risk situation and, uh, and, and we don't want any parts. Uh, but they still admired the people. It was like, hey, if you can commit to that, even though uh, them people, uh, them people who, were, who were with y'all just a week ago, they dead now. But if you can do it, like good for you. But nobody, nobody wanted to join them. And, and again, perhaps the, the cost seemed too high for them. It's not uncommon for anyone who is devout in their faith uh, to, to be given admiration, for, for people to say, to look and be like, hey, like you are real serious about your thing there. Uh, it, someone shared a story one time uh, here in our Bible study. Or, or on a Friday night that uh, that they were at one time, they were so uh, devout and, and they were at church and they, and they lived right and they were just a, a good example. The folks thought that they were, that, that they practiced Islam because you know, Christians, Christians don't do that. We're not that, we're not that devout, we don't. We should be, but that's not the reputation. And so had to, had to have been something else, had to have been worshiping uh, in a different way, practicing another faith tradition. But we, we, have, to, we have to be obedient to a fault. And what I mean by that is whatever we believe God is telling us to do, we should we should just do it. Whatever God is directing us to go, we should go there. Whatever gifts the Holy Spirit has given us, we, we should honor God and honor the Holy Spirit of God, and we should walk in that gifting, and we should use it for the edification of, of the church. Let's, let's, let's go to, this, let's go to uh, this, this next verse. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. This lets me know that these people had integrity. It, it, it requires integrity. One, to, for people to admire you and not want to join, but in, in spite of what other people see that looks like it's, like it's too high a cost, People see it and they still want to join. They want to join in. It's, it would be because, because we have integrity. And, and o- obedience will win us, or excuse me, integrity will, will win us some, some admiration. Hypocrisy is what drives people away. And so the apostles and those believers who, who came and were there every day, as often as they came together to, to fellowship with one another, there, there wasn't any hypocrisy. Now, yeah, this was, this was at the very beginning, it was early and the apostles are doing all kinds of miracle signs and wonders. And, and, and may, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was easier to believe back then. I, I don't know. I doubt it being as though their, their lives were at stake and their leader had been, had been executed, but, but may, maybe it was easier because, because there were signs, because they saw uh, people who could not walk, get up and walk again, and, and people who could not see have their sight restored. Uh, people who had just been sick and had some type of infirmity for a long time suddenly become well. So maybe that made it easier, but I don't know. I've I've had bills that uh, that needed to be paid, and there was more bill than there was money. And and right on time, something came through, and 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 I was able to do what I needed to do. I was able to pay what I needed to pay. There have been 
there have been jobs that I've applied for that I was not I was not qualified for, but I applied anyway. And and lo and behold, if it wasn't the favor of God that that allowed me to to get this position, I can think of any number of things. I have known of people who who the doctor had given them just a short time to live. They had found cancer in their body and, and they said, you've only got a few months to live. And, and then they, they, you know, they, they did their treatment and the doctors weren't sure that it was, that it was gonna work. It's like, we're giving you, you know, hopefully this extends you just a little bit, it, but, it, but eventually the cancer was gone and they lived several years more. And I don't know, maybe because it doesn't happen in an instant, it, it's harder for us to see those things as miracles. But those things are miracles, even if we want to call it the miracle of modern medicine, because there was a time where there was no treatment for any kind of cancer. There was a time when, when there were no vaccinations that could, be, uh, that could be created in a lab so that, so that we might not die of infectious diseases. These are miracles and we see them every single day. We see them all the time. And, and so maybe, maybe we should just pay a little closer attention because it wasn't, I don't really think it was easier back then. I think we just need to, we need to open our eyes a, a little bit more. But these were true believers. Verse 14 lets us know that these were some true believers and, and they were without hypocrisy. Like they, they walked the walk and, and they, they talked the talk. They, they did the things that they said that they were going to do, and they looked after one another. We, we saw that when we, when we did our, our study called the Reimagined Church in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. The reason they were admired is because of how well they treated one another, how much they loved one another, and, and how much they made sure that everybody was taken care of within, within, their, within their camp, within their, their fellowship. This is the only way that people would continue to join their fellowship, that, that they had been demonstrating something that was authentic. And if, if you want to pick a couple words out of here that are, that are important to hang on to, the first one would have been integrity. Uh, we got to have integrity, and, and people can then admire our walk. If we lack integrity, then, they ju then we're just seen as hypocrites. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand or, or anything, uh, but how many of you have, have seen somebody on social media say, or hear somebody in person say, I don't go to church because people in church are hypocrites? It's hypocrites in church, and so I'm not going there where the hypocrites are. Now, Yes, there's another side to this uh, that we could say about someone who might say that, but let's be real. We're not always, we don't always have the most in integrity, but we also need to, to demonstrate authenticity. So that first word that, that stands out is integrity, and, and the next one that stands out is, is authenticity. It needs to come from a real place. We shouldn't be Look, the whole fake it till you make it, that's not necessary. It's not necessary to fake it. If we've had a, a true experience of God, if we have, if we have really uh, experienced Jesus and we truly believe he is the son of God and the Holy Spirit has come upon us, Jesus said that we receive power. There's something that, there's something that happens. And so as we live out, as we live it out, we should, we should be, we should be authentic. Uh, let's, let's keep reading. As a result, and this is crazy, I'm not going to park here, but as a result, verse 15, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on, on some of them as he passed by. Like, they're like, Peter got the power. So like, like the woman with the issue of blood reached out and just wanted to touch the hem of his garment, the hem of Jesus' garment, folks just wanted to be in the shadow of Peter as he walked by. That's how much power these, the apostles, these, these early believers were, were operating in. And, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, I don't believe that that has changed. I don't believe there's less power today than there was back then. Because 
my Bible says that, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he's the same, that means his Holy Spirit is the same. And so the power is the same. It's not like he's running out of juice. It's not like he's an old iPhone, uh, right? When they come out with a new one and his battery is just being depleted. No, God has the same power. And so that same power exists with us. And so the same, the same, not saying that, you know, folks gonna get healed just being in our shadow or whatever, but there's power enough that people should want to be, be near us just to get a, just to get a little bit of it. Verse, uh, verse 16, crowds gathered also from the towns and Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. All of them were healed. That's power. Verse 17, then the high priest and, and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. Now, remember last week we, we said, every, not, everybody, not everybody is gonna be glad about, about your faith in Jesus. Not everybody is gonna be glad about, uh, about what you are, what you're doing in terms of you know, life improvements, changes to, uh, changes to the way you go about things. Some of the things that you used to do, you just don't do no more, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody's not going to like that. And, and these, these religious leaders, they didn't, they didn't like it. They were jealous. Now, now why, why would religious leaders be jealous? My God. They were jealous because, because they, were being, they were being displaced rather than people just coming to them to have their spiritual needs met uh, and making them feel all good about themselves. There were other people who, who clearly had some power because it, if you remember the lame, the lame man who was, who was made to walk in, in chapter four, it really happened. And, and they said, we can't say that it didn't happen. Like we see this man standing here and he has not stood for a very long time. They were being, they were being displaced. <laughs> I want to give you something that popped out to me uh, in these few verses. There are three types, there are three categories of people, three categories of people in, in our Christian living as we are trying to live our lives for, for Christ. And, and, and this might apply to any number of things. Three, three types of people, admirers, believers, and rivals, admirers, believers, and rivals. Notice I didn't say haters. I know it ends with an ERS like the other two words, but you ain't got no haters. I don't have no haters. And quite frankly, rivals can make things a little harder for us than haters because how are you gonna hate from outside the club? <laughs> But rivals, rivals occupy are trying to occupy the same space. So admirers, we saw we saw our admirers in verse thirteen. Those were the people who were like I can't get with y'all, but but I love what you're doing, love what you've done with the place. Looks amazing. Uh, keep on keep up keep up the good work. And Jesus was that his name? Yeah, keep serving him. You guys are doing great. It, we've got admirers. It, these people are standing back. Then, we, then there are believers, and in, in, in this case, in the context of what we're reading, believers are, are those who believe in, in Christ, and in our personal lives, in the things that we've got going on uh, as we are operating in our gifts or, or, or fulfilling our calling or uh, following through on the assignment that God has given us, there are going to be people who admire and say, hey, love what you're doing. There's going to be people who believe in what we're doing. It's going to be people who believe in what you are doing, and then there are going to be rivals. And again, these aren't haters. If you remember uh, the study that we did in in First Samuel chapter one about Hannah and and Pen Peninnah, they were both wives of the same man, and they were they were rivals. Peninnah was uh, Penina, however you say, it, was Hannah's rival. Well, they were both trying to occupy the same the same space. Uh, that word 
uh, comes from a, a, a sporting term uh, for for boats that are trying that are racing and trying to be in the, in the same space. They are rivals, and and so our rivals those are the those are the ones who would, who might stab us in the back. So we've got our admirers who are standing back and admiring. We've got believers who will have our backs, and then we've got rivals who who might stab us in the back. And so we've got to watch our back, uh, or, or like I watch your back. I mean, we don't have to be paranoid or anything, but, but we've got these three these three different groups of people. And, and, and I don't have anything pro profound to say about that. I just saw it here in, in this text. Maybe I'll do it as a sermon and make it sound like super holy or something. But we've, we've got admirers, we've got believers, we've got rivals. We've got those who are standing back and watching us. We've got those who, who will have our backs and those who, who, who will try to stab us in the back when we are doing what we what we are supposed to be doing. Now, these, these rivals uh, of the apostles took them and threw them in jail. Again, took them and threw them in jail, again. It's not right, it's not fair, but that's what, that's what happened. Threw them in jail to, to await a public trial. And I love this. Let's go to verse 19. We, we gotta read this verses 19 and 20 together. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. What new life? This, this new life in Christ. So they were, the, the rivals came and threw them in jail, left them there overnight. While they were in jail, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and let them out of jail and said, go, go back to where you, you, the place you were just arrested from, the place that you, that you just experienced persecution, go back there and continue doing what, what, what Jesus charged you with doing, what, what Jesus said you should do. Go back and, and continue to, to fulfill your calling and to, and to walk out your assignment and, and that's what they did. Now, when God rescues us, when God rescues us, it's for us to continue doing his work. I, I, I'm guilty, and I won't assume that any of the rest of you are, but I am guilty of, of having uh, petitioned the Lord and asking him to, uh, God, if you will just get me out of this situation, I won't dot, 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 dot. Again, I will change this, that, or whatever. God, if you work out this financial situation, I'm going to start, I'm going to start tithing for real. Uh, I've said all, all of those things and, and God rescues me, not because he believes I'm going to follow through on what I said, but because he, but because he's a good God and, and goodness is in him, but he, he rescues us so that we can do what he has called and assigned for us to do, not for us to do what we feel like doing. And, and a lot of times God will come, he'll intervene on our behalf. And, and then we just keep doing our own thing. Like, oh Lord, dear Lord, she's late God. Now God, I promise, I promise you that I will, I will give up the fornication if if there are no children coming into the world through, through this last interaction that I participated in. And let me tell you, most of the times that, I, that I've prayed that prayer, I'm not, say, not saying it was a whole lot, I'm just saying I prayed the prayer before. And I went back on, I went back on my word. Just kept on doing what I wanted to do. Now these 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 apostles and whoever else was thrown in jail with them when the angel let them out and said, "Hey, go back to the place you were arrested." They could be like, "You know what? We're gonna go. I'm not gonna go back there because of what just happened there. Like, why would I go back to a place where 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 people would mistreat me or where I have rivals? Where I feel like there's a need to watch my back. Why would I go back into that space? Well, if that's what if that's where God has 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 placed you if that's where you're planted then bloom where you are planted and sometimes we got sometimes we got to go back 
now I want to I want to make a distinction here. Uh, the, the apostles and and these early disciples they were being persecuted. There are, there is a difference between persecution and consequences. Had to take a long sip after that one. There's a difference between persecution and consequences. One of them we suffer for doing the right thing. And, and the other we suffer for doing our own thing. You, you catch that? Persecution is what happens to us and something that we suffer when we are doing the right thing. Consequences are the suffering that we experience because we did our own thing. Jonah was told by God to go do something. And he, instead of doing what he, what he was supposed to do, he's like, how about no, I'm gonna go the other way. And he went the other way and he suffered consequences. There was, there was a storm at sea. There was all, all it, 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 it was all bad. And it wasn't just bad happening to him. It was bad happening to the people who he was with. And it got to the point where it was like, yo, dude, like, what did you do? Because everybody who was on the same ship with him, they, they were in the same boat. You know, you know, have you ever heard that that colloquialism, that axiom, that we, hey, I'm in the same boat with you? Well, they were literally in the same boat with Jonah. And because they were in the same boat with a disobedient man, and he was suffering consequences for his disobedience, then those who were in the boat with him were also suffering consequences. And this isn't even this isn't even part of what we're talking about tonight. But but be careful who you get in the boat with. Don't just get in anybody's boat. Don't just let anybody onto your boat. Because see, this wasn't Jonah's boat, but they let him on. He's like, oh yeah, I'm trying to get to the other side of the, the other side of the known world. It's literally where he was trying to go. Don't just let anybody on your boat because you don't know what they're running from. But Jonah suffered consequences. That was not persecution. So when and I, I know that none of us have, have done this, but when when there was when there was a pandemic, and I say was because at some point somebody's going to watch this, and the pandemic will be over. But, but like in in early 2020, uh, like this time two years ago, when when everybody needed to distance and, and large gatherings were shut down, and 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 many many of follower of Jesus, many a proclaiming Christian said that the church was being persecuted because, uh, because they were not allowed to have large gatherings. And if anybody was being persecuted, it was only people who insisted on having large gatherings when for everybody's health and safety, it was like, eh, let's, let's stay at home or just smaller groups, you can do small groups. Why don't you meet in your small group? That was not persecution. When there's a sign on the store, and I know mask mandates are lifted and I still wear a mask. You may not, that's your, that's your prerogative. That's between you, the Holy Spirit and everybody who breathes in your aerosols. But if there's a sign on the door at, a, at a, an establishment that you're going into that says, please wear a mask and you go in without a mask and you get kicked out, you're not being persecuted. Those are consequences, consequences for doing your own thing. I just wanted to make sure that, that it was clear what the apostles were experiencing and what they were sent back to was the place where they had experienced uh, persecution. Now, the, the religious leaders might say, might have said, no, these are consequences for doing what we told you not to do. But they had already said, who do you think we're going to listen to? Like, should we listen to you or should we listen to God? Y'all be the judge of that. Doing what is right might cause us to suffer uh, or even lose something sometimes. Uh, but these are the types of losses that we should be okay with. We should be okay with the, with, with the with the losses that we experience because we chose to do the right thing, because we chose to walk in the direction that, that God was leading us in. It's, it's okay. It, it doesn't feel good. I'm not saying, I'm not, I don't want to minimize, I don't want it to seem like I'm minimizing the, the emotional, mental experience of, of losing relationships, friends, uh, partnerships, sponsors, uh, donors, whomever. 
losing out on some things because we chose to do the right thing. But those are losses we should be okay with in the long run because we should be more committed to doing, to doing what is right than, than to just doing what we want, whatever is most, whatever feels the best at the time, whatever seems the easiest at the time. And I've chosen the easy way so many times. So I'm telling you from, from experience, like don't just choose, don't just choose the easy way uh, because you notice how you always, it seems like you always have to go back. Choosing the easy way almost always results in more work than doing it the right way the first time. Like if you, depending on which area you're in, who, who is you, who was your goat, you, you might take a, you know, a little ball of paper, you got to throw away and be like, Jordan or Kobe or LeBron or Curry, whatever. I don't know, but like you could have just walked across because eh, nine times out of 10, we missed that shot. Like just, just walk over there and throw, like get close, do a layup to the basket instead of trying to shoot threes uh, with, with some trash. Whenever we do, whenever we try to do stuff the easy way or the cute way, uh, a lot of times we end up having, uh, we end up having more work in the end. And those, again, those are, those are just consequences. Um, this last part, and then we got, and we're going to stop right here and pick up the rest next week. Uh, verses 21 through, uh, through 25, I want to read for us real quick. Acts 5, verses 21 through 25. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told. So they did, they did what they were told to do. They, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. They picked up where they left off. And when the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is basically the, the court, the council who will... Uh, who will adjudicate and, and determine, are they right? Are they wrong? So they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to, and sent to the jail for the apostles. Because they think the apostles, they left them in jail, figure they're going to still be in jail. Verse 22, but on arriving to, at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing, the, on hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Like, okay, we weren't, we weren't prepared for, we weren't expecting this. Verse 25, then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts and teaching the people. Now, when, when, we, when we're living as witnesses, it's, it's, it's that last verse for me, look, they're, they're standing in the temple courts teaching the people, which is what Jesus told them to do. So when they couldn't find them in the jail where they expected them to be because of what they had done to them, it turned out that they were doing, they were found doing what they were supposed to be doing. When we live as witnesses, we, we may not be found where our rivals expected us to be, but we'll be right where we're supposed to be. When we live as witnesses. We may not be found where our rivals expected us to be based on the things that they had done to us, but we'll be right where we're supposed to be. The priests and the guards were shocked that they were not there and that what they had done to them did not prevent them from doing what they were supposed to be doing. And this feels a lot like a sermon because because this just feels, it just feels like my help is on the way. And I know we talked about this last week, that, that, that nothing can come against, there's not enough opposition in the world to, to stop what God is doing. But there's not enough persecution either. 
when we are being witnesses, when we are living as witnesses, it doesn't matter what our rivals tried to do to us. It doesn't matter how they tried, how that person or those people tried to hold us back. It doesn't matter what, what, what resources we did not receive at our job or what what extra help we did not receive at school. It does not matter what was deprived of us, what was withheld from us by those who were supposed to love and care for us. It does not matter what they tried to do to us because when we are living as witnesses, we, st we still gonna end up doing what we're supposed to be doing because of our integrity, because of, because of how we authentically are in fellowship with one another and, and part members of the body of Christ, there's no need to run. Now, again, they could have ran. When the jail opened up, the angel was like, hey, go back to the temple and, and teach some more. And they could have run. Like, um, last time they put us in jail, they they let us go. Not so sure that's going to happen this time. I'm not going to take my chances, and I'm just going to go another way. It's not worth it. It's not worth what I have what I have to deal with to keep on going down this path. It's not worth the obstacles. It's not worth having to deal with the actual people who are working against me. It's not worth going forward in this, I'm just going to choose another path, and hopefully God is okay with that. You know, he, God may be okay with that. God loves us. He's full of mercy, full of grace, but the Holy Spirit's power empowers us to be witnesses, and so again, Nothing anyone can do to us can actually stop us from doing what God, by his spirit, has empowered us to do. Nothing. Okay, so we can't have large gatherings. That's not going to stop us from being the church. Okay, so my so uh, my car broke down. It's not gonna stop me from trying to get a ride. So the, this person who said they were gonna do this and and work with me and fill this role and operate in this capacity, they said they were and they didn't. But that's not gonna stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. It might take a little longer to get to where I think I'm supposed to be going, but. It's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stop me. And those who those who would try, who would seek to sabotage, whether it be a part of our life or our entire life, trying to just sabotage our whole existence, will find themselves, like like it said, like Peter said, we read last week, will find themselves looking silly and feeling foolish. Because we're not relying on their support anyway. I'm I'm not, and this is this is a lesson that I am that I am yet learning. So we're doing this together. I I am not relying, nor should I be relying on anyone other than God. If God gave me the instruction to do a thing, then God will, will give me the, the power to do it in spite of any circumstance, situation, storm, person, systemic injustice that comes my way. There's no need to run. We can stay put. If any of you are like me, and I'm sure there's one or two others like me, this week felt like giving up on something. And if it's what God told you to do, he will give you 
what you need to keep on going. Just like when God sent Abraham with his son Isaac to make a sacrifice on this mountain and he was gonna have to sacrifice his son. And, and Isaac asked, Isaac was up on game like, father, we've got fire. Like we, we've got everything we need for a sacrifice, but a sacrifice, what's up? And, and, and just at the right time, at just the right time, an angel of the Lord said to Abraham, don't you lay a finger on that boy. God, God sees that you, God got you. There's a ram over here stuck in the bush. Wouldn't, how would, imagine that, that just what you needed is right where you are and can't get away from you. And in Romans chapter five, it says the same thing that at just the right time, while we were powerless to save ourselves, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, scarcely would someone die for, uh, for a righteous person, they maybe might die for a good person, but God demonstrated his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us at just the right time. And if he did it to save our lives, then we, we've got to believe that he is going to do the same thing in our living. That at just the right time, He's going to provide what we need. And sometimes that's just the strength to keep going. 